Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're doing a five channel amplifier and subwoofer in this 2021 Ford F 150. Now, in this install, we're going to show you how to integrate this amp and sub to the existing factory audio sound system. Let's get started. Now before we get started, a couple of things to note, RF-150 is equipped with the BNO factory audio sound system, so it has more than just the radio powering the speakers. There's a subwoofer and factory amplifier found behind the rear passenger seats. Now in this install here today, we'll show you the techniques to install this amp and sub to whether you have the BNO upgraded factory audio sound system or the bass audio. So without further ado, let's head to the bench to show you the parts that we're going to use for our install. All right, so here at the bench, the parts that we're using for our install first and foremost are the amp and sub combo. Now we're going with these kicker 12 inch subwoofers in this down firing box. A single sub with a 12 inch passive radiator. As for the amplifier, we're doing this Kenwood five channel amplifier. Now to wire up our Kenwood, we need a few additional parts. Now this is where it will vary depending on your trim level. Because we have the BNO factory audio sound system, we need this Amp Pro, which allows us to install our five channel amplifier integrates into the data system of our F-150. If you do not have the factory BNO audio sound system, it's just the base audio. You don't need this Amp Pro 4, so you'll save yourself a little bit of money, but you will need load resistors and some sort of T-harness, and we can link those parts and an example of that in the video description for you. Finally, we do need a little bit of wiring. We're going this SCAR Audio 4 gauge amplifier wiring kit. Uh, this is oxygen free copper and uh, that provides mostly everything we need. Now we do need a few additional RCA cables. Uh, so first thing we need to do is find out the best place for our new amplifier to seat. Because this replaces the entire factory amp, we can put this in that factory amp location or we can put it underneath the seat. All right, so here in the back seat, as we take a little closer look, some trim levels will have some sort of electronics or battery being there up underneath the seat. Similar generation F-150, this was occupied and unfortunately we had to put the amplifier right up on that ledge. In our case here today, this is nice and open so we can easily build an amp mount that fits in there or pop your seats down, it's pretty easy to do so. There's just a little, little guy that you can pull up there. Once this comes down, here's our factory amplifier and subwoofer. Now our pack harness that we have will replace this entirely, so we can completely remove that um, as these harnesses will plug into our pack module. Our factory sub, on the other hand, we're actually gonna leave that here and installed because if you notice on your F-150, if you pull out this subwoofer, it actually exposes a hole that goes through the back of the bed of the truck. Fortunately, we don't want to expose a hole through the cab, and so we're going to leave that in there just to keep everything watertight. Okay, so we're back here at the bench. We're getting ready to find out how to best mount our amplifier, and considering we have the Amp Pro 4, and basically it allows us to totally replace the B&O amplifier, we pulled it out. Um, two 10 millimeters and two uh, a couple torque screws here at the top. This whole piece came out after we unplugged it. We pulled off the BNO amplifier off the factory mount. We grabbed ourselves a piece of ABS plastic. And basically what we've done here is cut it to that same shape. And we mounted our amplifier to the plastic and then the plastic to the mount. And this will bolt into the factory location. Now we put our uh, Amp Pro 4 up here, the main module. And in the Amp Pro 4, it has a couple of harnesses that will go to various locations. We'll cover that in a moment. But this is kind of how we're going to get everything set up. Looking a little closer at the amplifier itself, uh, we have a power and a ground. So this will have to go all the way up to the battery. And we're going to use the amplifier wiring kit that we showed there here at the beginning. Ground, we're going to go to a grounding location there on the back wall, which is nice and conveniently close. And then our speaker wire, our one, two, three, and four channels are going to power both the doors and the tweeters in the A pillars. Um, and the harness almost covers everything where that will connect to by the Amp Pro, which is super convenient, except for the tweeters aren't pinned back here. The tweeters are powered off the factory radio, where everything else is powered off 
uh, the factory amplifier. So we'll have to run a little bit of wiring there. And then our sub output simply goes to our new sub box. Connect our six channels of RCAs from our Ampro to our six channels of RCA inputs of our uh, Kenwood amplifier. And we need to set up our dip switches and get everything done there before we get everything hooked up. Now this Kenwood also supports a base knob which wasn't included in the box. You have to buy that separately, unfortunately. Um, but we can link that in the description if you're interested in that as well. What we're gonna do is start wiring everything up here at the bench before we get it into the car. And the last thing we need to do is we need to tie in our tweeters. Now our Ampro, besides the module that we already mounted to the board, comes with our main uh, amplifier bypass harness. These will connect into the, all the terminals at the amplifier. Um, your USB and your two additional harnesses here and this provides all your connections for example if you also had the 18 speaker version of the BNO this supports it this will provide multiple speakers uh, connections except for your tweeters now looking at these connections you're gonna have uh, speakers 1 through 8 there and on our harness instructions it'll actually identify what each one goes to so for example we're doing the Ford F-150 we have the eight speaker system essentially here we'll identify which each speaker does and where it's located speaker six is our factory sub which we're not retaining speaker five is our center channel which we're not amplifying unfortunately the pillar speakers aren't in this area they are powered off the factory radio so you're gonna have to grab the secondary harness that's included with it depending on your generation it's gonna be one or the other in most instances for this video's sake it's going to be the 32 pin harness FD03 which is this harness here FD03 and essentially this will plug into the back of the radio it's your T harness and this will have your tweeter connections in it now you don't necessarily have to pull the radio out if you just want to run new lines right to the tweeters you could do that too and save a harness that is totally your call lastly here because our Kenwood doesn't come with the base knob fortunately the pack radio does the pack module and essentially we can flush mount this in any location we choose uh, this will plug into our pack module and this will run all the way up front and we'll find a good place to mount that the first thing we're gonna do is grab our main harness and we're gonna get this plugged into our pack module we got to set the dip switches on our pack interface first either to 4 volts or 5 volts depending on the amplifier and then we'll run these down to the terminals of our amp so let's go ahead and start wiring so let's take a closer look at the instructions provided by your Amp Pro. Now it's really important you do go through these instructions in order to set up your module correctly. Uh, just a couple of things here. There is an optional knockout so you can add the Toslink fiber optic connection in case you're going into, for example, some sort of DSP. Also talks about chime volumes here, current output from the remote wire, uh, channel 5 and 6 are non-feeding using the base knob. Further down shows you the actual connections on the module itself where everything plugs into, the RCA outputs, and the optional knockout for the Toslink adapter, again if you're using some sort of DSP. Further down on the page is our dip switch information on setting up the module correctly. Now dip switch number one is a two channel mode feature and that's more commonly used if you're using that knockout to add the Toslink adapter using fiber optics for a DSP you'd set that module into two channel mode if that's not needed in your install just keep it set to off dip switch number two is depending on the amplifier you're installing um, this comes defaulted through those RCA outputs uh, putting out five volts of signal but if your amplifier can't handle that much signal input you can set dip switch number two to on and what it'll do is drop it down to four volts um, you have to check with your specific amplifier. Our Kenwood can take five volts, so we'll keep ours off. Number three is not used, and number four is vehicle specific, so you won't uh, do anything with those switches. Now, in our install today, we're gonna keep them all set to off, because uh, there's no action needed. Further down on the page is our um, connection diagram, so you can see where all our harnesses will connect. These three harnesses will connect into the harnesses removed out of the factory BNO amp. We'll have a ton of speaker leads, which we'll show you here in a moment. This shows you how our base knob connects to the module and our RCAs or the Toslink adapter that'll connect into the module itself. Further down on that page talks about installation information, um, where everything really connects to, how to set up those specific dip switches we just talked about. On the next page here, it talks about the additional harnesses included in the box because sometimes 
And in most circumstances, not all the speakers are run through the amplifier. So it specifically refers to those little T-harnesses uh, to connect to your tweeters, for example, and those specific speaker leads. There's a couple of different adapters here depending on your generation, trim, and gear truck. So make sure you go through those before you get everything installed. Now, the next couple of pages specifically refer to a uh, wiring diagram for our module here. So you know where each wire connects to. So we have Bron Bronco information, Bronco Sport, we have F-150, uh, more F-150, F-150 with the 18 speaker system, F-250, F-350, Mach-E. We'll find our specific year trim, which is technically the 21 through 23 or 24, it's the same. Uh, we have the eight speaker system, not the 18. So we're gonna use this diagram to ensure that we know where everything connects. Lastly here, very important for information is the setup and configuration. So once you've installed everything here, super, super important, close all the doors, lock the car using the factory key fob and let it sit for 10 minutes. Uh, Walk away with the key fob, go far away so it's out of range of the vehicle here. What we want this to do is for the vehicle to go to sleep with our amp pro connected. It's part of its programming sequence. And when you go back to the vehicle after that 10 minutes, it should function correctly here. Now it walks you through all the other adjustments here, especially volume, balance, fade, EQ settings, everything like that. So that's about it for our manual here. Again, it's very important that you go through this so you don't skip a step and cause any damage to your vehicle. So we can actually kind of clean up our harness a little bit here. We deep in speakers that we didn't even have. So a ton of the speakers from like the 18 speaker system, we only have eight. So there's a lot of set of speaker wires we don't even need. So to cut down on the bulkiness of the harness, we kept our center channel, which is red, and our factory sub connection, which is blue, because we have those, but we're not doing anything with them. So we're just gonna leave them nice and short. Uh, here's our four sets of door speakers here. White's front left, gray is front right, green is rear left, and purple is rear right. And uh, we basically deep in all the other harnesses we didn't need over here as well. So this cleans it up a heck of a lot more. Um, now we're gonna loom this in high temperature test tape and get it connected to our module. All right, so we've spent some time wearing up our amp rack here. As you saw before, we cut out this piece of ABS plastic to mount everything on. Our amplifier needs signal so it knows what to play. Our pack module is generating that signal with these RCA outputs. Now we used three footers. They're a little longer, so it loops back behind. But from the RCA output comes all the way down here and goes into the input of the amplifier. Add additional mounting locations and we found screws so we can mount our wire to the board to make it nice and clean. So six channels front rear sub goes to the six channels of input front rear sub of our amplifier. Once it amplifies that signal it needs to come out and we have our fronts, our rears and our tweeters coming from our four channels of output pack module doesn't include our tweeters so we um, on our front two sets we went ahead and did a um, extra set of speaker wire um, and as that comes down we'll tap into our tweeters so we'll run that all the way to our tweeters now you can run it to the t-harness included with the pack module or right to the tweeters themselves we're going to go right to the tweeters themselves since we already have aftermarket speakers and then our subwoofer output comes right here down the bottom this will go to the sub box here we have a nice 12 gauge speaker wire and we also mounted that in place the blue white wire on our pack module is our amp turn on so that went to the that terminal for a remote input and then all the connections to our factory amplifier are here. Now we went ahead and wrapped everything in high temperature tested tape here. It also comes to the base knob, which we need to connect to the base knob port on our pack module. We'll do that here in a minute. And finally, our power and ground. Now power and ground, uh, we have a ground kind of up here on the factory rear firewall. If we flip this on over, you can kind of see how we rounded that. That comes down, this goes up, and this is gonna go to that factory ground point. And then our power wire is going to go down, and this is going to work our way along the passenger side of the vehicle all the way to the battery location. Looks nice and clean. They should bolt in really nicely. At this point of time, with our amplifier basically all wired up here, except for adding in our base knob wire, we can head to the car to get this thing installed. All 
All right, so with the hood open, our battery here is on the passenger side. Um, we're gonna go through the boot on the passenger side to run our power wire through. Um, but before we make any connections at this point, let's go ahead and remove the negative off the battery. Now we kinda just have it sitting in place. Before we mount it up, there's our factory grounds right there. We're gonna remove that 10 millimeter. We're gonna clean up the ground with a wire brush and then mount our ground to that location. All right, so we went ahead and uh, cleaned up the paint there, got our ground on. We're done with our ground location. We can go ahead and put the sound ending mat back and mount up our rack. For a power wire, we just fished it behind the factory subwoofer, behind our jack here, up underneath the panel, working our way forward. You saw us pop off our panels here. All right, so let's go ahead and prepare to start pulling our wire through the firewall. Now, if I get a little light in here, there is our factory grommet with a nipple you can cut off to expose a nice hole to pass your power wire through. We're gonna go ahead and then cut that off with a pair of flush cut pliers. Now here's the positive terminal on the battery here, and we want our fuse and fuse holder that's included with our amplifier wiring kit to be as close to that terminal as possible. So we'll probably put in some sort of fuse mount there in this location. All right, so we cut that off. As you can see there, there's a little hole here. Now we'll easily pass our hanger through there and fish it from the kick area of the passenger seat through the firewall here. Then we're gonna use that to pull our power wire through the firewall. All right, so we fished our hanger through that hole. There's another thin rubber wall to pierce through. But once we did so, that goes through the other side. On this side, sometimes it comes up down below. Ours came out right there. So we popped our glove box out. That gives us access. We fit our power wire up through here. Now we're gonna pull our power wire through the firewall. We've already taped it to our hanger and we're gonna loop that up really well with some soap and water so it passes through that rubber grommet really easily. So that's our plan here. We're gonna soak that up and pull from the engine bay side. So with our power wire pulled through the firewall, we actually made a fuse mount out of leftover ABS plastic. We snagged that bolt there, a little L band, so it's nice and serviceable but it's up and out of the way. We can still get to the factory fuse box here. And then we have a short lead that'll go to the positive post here on the battery. With this now connected, that's our last main connection. So we can go ahead and now reconnect the negative back on the battery, which we've done here. With the rack all in, we fished our base knob wire as well as our tweeter wiring. We're moving our way forward here, just like we did with the power wire up underneath panels, working our way forward. Up underneath the B pillar, ran our tweeter wiring as well as our base knob. Now, this is where you really need to decide whether you're gonna pull the factory radio and install the T harness, or if you've already replaced your speakers like we have, and we have a component set with the tw Alpine tweeter already in there, and a mid base in the door, and we can link that video in case you wanna see how we did that. It's easy for us just to attach our new tweeter right to our tweeter wiring here versus running it all the way to the dash, tearing apart the dash and installing the T-harness. It's totally your call. Um, at this point, we, in our install, we're just going to fish our wire up to the A-pillar on both sides. And that's gonna be our plan is we're just gonna power our tweeter uh, directly off the amplifier and not through the T-harness. Um, it's just going to be a little more simple in our so case. Very important information is the setup and configuration. So once you've installed everything here, super, super important, close all the doors, lock the car using the factory key fob, and let it sit for 10 minutes. Uh, walk away with the key fob, go far away so it's out of range of the vehicle here. What we want this to do is for the vehicle to go to sleep with our amp pro connected. It's part of its programming sequence. And when you go back to the vehicle after that 10 minutes, it should function correctly here. Now okay, so we got everything put back together here. All the kick panels, our power wire is right on this side. Pulled it through the firewall. Um, we got our uh, tweeters all hooked up on this side to the amplifier. Underneath the steering wheel, we went ahead and put our base knob 
right there. Get a little location for it. With the pack module, it has to be flush mounted. That all put back together here. All our kick panels are back together. good to go with our install here today we just set our gains with an smd 8 one and uh, they're perfectly set to the five volt output of our pack module if you have any questions on what we did here go ahead and post a comment below like i mentioned before if you don't have the b and o factory audio sound system we'll link those specific parts in the description we'll link all the parts that we used in today's install in the description along with the videos to the front speaker and rear speaker install Thanks again for watching. Be sure to hit the like button if you liked what you saw. And don't forget to subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time. We will see you in the next video.